But most people, and both are elevated. If a person's getting fatter and fatter, they have elevated insulin to signal the growth and sufficient calories to fuel the growth. Both of them need to be turned down. Unfortunately, the overwhelming conversation only focuses on, focuses on one of those variables, which is the calories. So if you have an individual who begins cutting their calories, but they still have this underlying hyperinsulinemia, Dr. David Ludwig published a series of papers out of Harvard, which are beautiful, that look at the, the, the available amount of energy in the blood. And I referenced this earlier in our conversation. But if you are cutting calories, but insulin is still high, you are pushing all the calorie nutrients into the tissues. And that leaves a lower amount of calorie nutrients available in the blood. And the brain senses this. The brain has a limited capacity to store energy. And thus the brain says, hey, we're getting low on energy in the blood because it can't sense what's what's stored in the fat or the liver directly. And so it starts to promote greater hunger. And so if a person's weight loss or fat, shell, fat cell shrinking journey starts with cutting calories, they're very quickly gonna return right to where they started because if they haven't addressed the high insulin, they're gonna become very, very hungry. This is why when you look at these biggest loser game shows, you never see a reunion. Yeah. You never see them get back together because they gain it all back. So as much as calories matter, my strong advice is start with the low insulin approach. You just control your carbs, prioritize protein, don't fear the fat that comes with that protein. Now, and don't worry about the calories because if you um, correct your insulin, you will uh, have a higher metabolic rate by about two to 300 calories a day just by lowering insulin. Um, calorie expenditure, metabolic rate will just go up. This is reflective of in insulin is so good at telling the body to store energy that when it's absent or when it goes down, the body is spending it more readily than it would normally. So metabolic rate will go up and then you will start wasting energy in the form of ketones. So if insulin is down, the person's burning a lot of fat because insulin controls which fuel is being used. And when insulin is down for an extended period of time, about 16 hours, the body is burning so much fat that the liver is actually burning more fat than it needs to meet its own energetic needs. So the liver is basically saying, hey, I'm, I don't need any more energy. But also the liver is saying, yeah, but I can't stop burning fat because insulin's low. That excess is what is turned into ketones. Mm -hmm. And then now what about the ketones? They have a caloric value. Every ketone has a caloric value roughly similar to glucose. And when a person's in ketosis, you are now directly eliminating those ketones from the breath and in the urine. Well, those are calories that based on the typical view of thermodynamics, we would say, well, they have to be burned through exercise or stored, or they can just be wasted if insulin is low. So that represents another mechanism whereby a low insulin approach is very helpful for weight loss because you are literally wasting energy. You're breathing these ketones out or you're urinating them out. And so eventually the person's gonna lose a certain amount of weight by just addressing the insulin, not even counting calories. And then if they find that they get to a plateau, then I say, okay, now it's time to scrutinize calories. But the best way in my view to do that is through structured fasting rather than yeah. through kind of constant deprivation and this underlying hunger that yeah. comes with it.